Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to today's Reddit quickie from the subreddit HFY called The Laws of War. Written by Commander Mallow. The link to the original will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. Year 109th Cycle of the Sevon. Month Kolaha. Day Driluk. Log entry number 2456894. Location, Alpha Century Prime POW Facility. Archivist, clear it. Log, begin. There are laws in war. At least, that is what the humans taught me. In my tenure here at this facility, I have decided to recap the events which led to my confinement here. If one could call it that. Some time ago, in the 104th cycle of the Crickpool, or the Galactic Standard Year of 2645, our species, the Axel, declared war on humanity. I had been alive for 18 standard orbits at the time. Around when the Axel human war began, there had been galactic council put in place to help the other species, and to enforce the rules, so to speak, during wartime. Mind you, this was nothing compared to what we saw the humans do. The idea of having rules in war seemed sound in theory, in practice, however, it is much, much harder to apply. Whenever a species would commit atrocities or war crimes in whatever war they happened to be fighting in, the council, at most times, would turn a blind eye to the actions of others. Sometimes they did this to protect vital trade. This meant that one of the warning species would have some kind of valuable material or type of good, enough to make the council forego adding any trade embargoes or sanctions. Other times, it was fear. The fear that if any council members voted on punishing the offending species, they would face the anger of that species and risk war between them. The latter was the best describes the Axel at the time. We were a strong, powerful force in the galaxy. Not even the council would stand up to us. So, in the 103rd cycle of Ankpa, it was time for us to go on a new conquest. Some minor species known as the Quervav were expecting no resistance from the council. We both knew the consequences for opposing the Axel. Only, that isn't what happened. The conquest of the Quervav have gone rather quickly thanks to our capital ships, which had the ability to glass entire planets into nothing but smoldering ash, as well as the toxins that our scientists had developed. When deployed in the planet's atmosphere, the toxin would spread quickly, descending on the unsuspecting planetary defenses below. Once the toxin had achieved a stranglehold on the planet's populace, our troops would land, and thanks to the Axel physiology, we were immune to our own weapon. In case another species got a hold of our toxin and attempted to use it against us. However, after the war, something different happened. As usual, the Axel leaders approached us before the council, their heads held high in defiance, and perhaps a little pride. They thought that they already knew the outcome of this council meeting, for they had gone through the process many times. To their credit, it almost went the way that they were expecting. But just before the council was to adjourn, with the idea that the Axel were to have all charges dropped, a voice was heard in the chamber. A member of the council had stood up from his seat and began to make his way down to the floor. A human. We thought that this species was nothing. They were very plain physically, no interesting extremities to speak of besides two arms and legs. But regardless, he stood directly ahead of the axle leaders and spoke. There is something everyone in this room needs to hear. The axle are nothing but dishonorable, treacherous, and appalling. They indiscriminately target civilians, kill women and children, and they target the wounded and those whose job it is to save them. They should not be let off the hook. In fact, I propose a vote. All in favor of punishment being handed down from the council to the axle, raise one extremity in the air. All around the room, shock was probably the best expression one could describe the faces of everyone in the room. No one has ever spoken out like this in many years, and especially not in this manner. Too terrified to follow this one's human footsteps, the rest of the council had silently voted to remain quiet. The only other being in the room who had something in the air were the humans in the crowd. 
not that it would have done anything to the vote, since they were just spectators. The message behind it, though, was clear. The Axel leaders were both astonished and infuriated. How dare these lowly humans stand up to the might of the Axel military? If you know the pride of the Axel has, you know that they do not take insults like this kindly. However, the leaders had a common sense, and they knew that killing the human outright in the chamber, full of different species, would not be in their favor. The Axel leaders, with the burning hatred in their eyes, stared at what was soon to become their adversary, turned and walked out the chamber. The next day, the Axel declared war on humanity. Thanks to the fact that the Axel had just come out of another war, their military had not been ordered to stand down yet, and were therefore combat ready. However, the Axel wanted to prove a point. No one speaks out against us and lives to tell about it. And so, they recruited all Axel males aged 18 cycles and above. I was one of those recruits, sent to serve aboard one of the many ships of the Axel fleet. Thanks to my skills as an apprentice archivist, my main role was to organize files, help distribute orders amongst the fleet, things like that. And therefore, I saw little combat. Until that day. The war had been going in our favor, albeit slowly. Around 16 human colonies had surrendered. A full quarter of the forces had been destroyed. Our ship had been ordered along with the 14th Battle Wing to help take over another human colony one that was in a star system of Alpha Centauri. This time was different, however. All members of the crew were in a don armor and weapons, including me. Of course, I had been trained for this part of battle. However, I could never get used to the feeling of landing and charging towards the enemy lines. Even those affected by the toxin, human physiology did have some traits. Even affected by the toxin, a human could still fight for some time before succumbing to the effects. And this specific trait was the reason that they did so much damage to our forces. I believe my fear about the humans was justified. And on this day, everyone of the 14th Battle Wing was going to learn what fear truly was. As we landed in what appeared to be a field, partly surrounded by a thick tree line, the feeling in the air was calm. It was to be expected, with the toxin acting on the planet, its inhabitants would most likely be succumbing to the poison, and then our forces would take over the planet, and move on to the next, as soon as the last dropship had deposited the last ground troops on the surface. We heard a call from the radio from one of the scout ships. Humans have been sighted along the tree line. I repeat, humans have been sighted. The transmission was cut short. Soon, every soldier was alert and scanning the tree line and looking for the humans. It didn't take very long, because as it turns out, the humans were looking for us too. The feeling that something was wrong didn't process for most. They had thought of it as just another small human resistance cell, to be easily destroyed and forgotten. Until we heard the first human head to tone full battle armor, armed to the teeth, emerge from the tree line and then another human followed suit. For the next two minutes, humans began emerging from all around the tree line. First, they numbered in the hundreds, then expanded to thousands. Both sides just stood there for another minute, waiting for the other to do something. I had never seen so many Axel with such a fierce determination. As the order to advance was fire was given, it wasn't even a second before the human guns responded. We could not see the faces through the battle armor, but to the Axel soldiers of that day, they were the faces of monsters. Time became irrelevant as the battle wore on. We felt like hours later, but commanding officers gave the order to glass the tree line from orbit. Our platoon stopped and waited, waited for a giant explosion at the tree line that would result in nothing but the burning trees and smoldering human corpses. But it never came. It was not until much later that we would find out that the humans were capable of. We learned that the humans who engaged us on the ground were but a distraction from the real plan. Human ships loaded with armored soldiers had emerged from behind the planet's moon. As approaching our ships, while some of the ships had been destroyed, those that weren't wreaked havoc amongst our ships. These armored beasts swept through every ship on the fleet, deck, 
by deck until no soldiers remained. Then an unprecedented event in Axel history occurred. The order to stand down and surrender was given. Never before had the Axel battle group been ordered to surrender. So surely it was a cruel joke, right? But as I looked around the Axel platoon, which had once been filled with proud Axel soldiers, slowly they began to drop their weapons. As it happened, the humans advanced from the tree line. They finally reached our platoon as the last Axel soldier dropped his weapon. We were ordered to walk through the tree line in a single file, and after some time we reached a building. I had read up in human history, and there was one mention of Adolf Hitler and the concentration camps. These camps used to exterminate those of certain religion, but to me, it seemed that history had repeated itself. Only instead of humans exterminating humans, it was humans exterminating us. As we stepped inside, we were funneled into the rooms with strange-looking pads. Our hands still on our heads, then, in the blink of an eye, we found our group at the some sort of facility. All around us, we stared in awe. There was a medical ward, sleeping quarters, and even an area full of places to sit. And in here, there were strange objects that the humans called uh, entertainment. Welcome to Century Prime POW facility, boomed a voice, which spoke perfect axily. You are here because you were apprehended in battle, and are now officially prisoners of war. Should you have any questions, feel free to consult any terminal around the facility, or you may speak to the facility's commander. If you are looking for a wounded comrade, please check the medical ward first. That was the beginning of what would become my transformation. A medical ward meant for your enemies. It had to be a trick. There was no way that a species had the audacity to face the Axel battle wing head on and win, willingly give them help to the enemies. Oh, how wrong was I? The humans had a capacity for peace and healing that rivaled their capacity for death and destruction. Many of our wounded comrades, who we expected to be left on the field when they were not able to march to the teleporter, had wound up here, being cared for by cutting the edge of the medical tech, including the commander of my platoon. It baffled me. The one man on the list of the military secrets probably as long as my arm was here being treated by human doctors, rather than being tortured for information, as is usually done with officers of the opposing militaries. I decided to go and speak to the facility commander, who was currently sitting in an office examining something on a data pad. As the guard escorted me over, the human looked up from his data pad and gave me a smile, and stood up from his chair and extended his arm towards me, and after a few seconds of me staring at it, he placed it back at his side. Ah, a visitor, said the commander, who was rather short by human standards, and did not look like a man who has experienced combat. Someone like me. I don't get many around here. Most times the prisoners are too awestruck to wander around the facility endlessly, while others constantly keep to themselves, planning ways to escape. Not that it ever works, though. And soon enough, they join their comrades and enjoy their time here. So how can I help you? I stood there for a moment, wondering how I understood him so perfectly. The speaker is one thing, but hearing your own language spoken better than most Axel through the mouth of another species was astonishing. I am using a universal translator, he said. We humans developed it to communicate with alien species, to establish relationships with them. Basically, it learns languages by hearing them, and eventually it can translate with perfect accuracy between languages. I nodded, still amazed. I was wondering, I asked, what exactly is this place, its purpose? The human clapped his hands together and sat back down, motioning for me to join him on the other chair, which I did. Then he explained, Well, this is a place where we keep prisoners of war, as the loudspeaker outside announced to you when you... I shook my head. Perhaps I should rephrase my question. Why are we here? Why are my comrades staying in comfort and being treated for their injuries? The human wore a look on his face, as if it was not the first time he had been asked this question. Well, to put it plainly, we have rules regarding warfare, he told me. Like the council. It is very rare that a species follows the council's rules, even its own members, but they don't have rules that would require any of this. 
the commander did a weird half nod. In a sense, he continued, us humans have had rules since before we emerged on the galactic stage. We don't kill civilians, we don't kill the wounded, nor the doctors whose goals it is to save them. We always rescue escape pods from ships after battle, and we restrict our weaponry to things that don't cause prolonged suffering or maiming. Unlike a certain someone I can think of right now. He finished with a glaring stare. I put my head down, dejected. It was worn I wasn't the one who created the toxin. I shot back my axle pride bubbling up inside me. I know, and that is why you're here and not in a penal colony. Working for hours until you're tired, only to wake up the next morning to do it again. He fired back. He had a point, I suppose. Anything else I can help you with, he asked. If you look up my record, you can find my age and previous occupation. If it is possible, I would like to continue that occupation to a limited extent. I said with a nervous to answer. Actually, we were planning to anyways, said the commander, his smile returning to his face. Name Clert, occupation Askel Naval Conscript, age 18 cycles. Did I get that right? He asked, knowing full well that the answer was yes. I nodded. Well, you are pretty young, and a conscription isn't good for anyone. You will be allowed to work as an archivist for us. Unfortunately, the law states that you are still a soldier, and must remain here until such a time as that you can be released can be negotiated, or if this war ends. Having been a commander here for five years, however, I think you won't mind the conditions. He explained, and once again I nodded silently. And so, here I sit today, in comfort, working for my captors. From the stories of new prisoners and the occasional rumors spread by others, I've heard that the humans have pushed the Axel back to our homeworld, and they are currently blockading the planet. I also heard peace talks have been opened up between the two peoples. But that was an official announcement by the commander, whom I've grown more close to as we both share a love of history. There are laws to war. I know that now. Perhaps one day the people of the galaxy can follow the example set by humanity. To quote a human author, After all, tomorrow is another day. Log End And then my friends, that's the end of this Reddit quickie. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel or the author, all the stuff is down below. And as always, I hope that you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next story. Cheers.